All right, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this. This has been been insane. People just completely being disingenuous, having bad faith takes on what Phil Spencer has said in this interview, specifically when it comes to consoles, building great games, and how you get people onto the, your platform and how you grow and the overall Xbox strategy. Here is a clip. It's about a two minute clip. I will play through it. I'll probably stop in between. So the video doesn't get flagged for copyright or anything like that. But let's listen to what Phil Spencer says. And I'll tell you why everybody out here who is misinterpreting Phil Spencer, are either doing it on purpose for console wars, or they're just lacking severe comprehension skills over the last number of years of what Xbox's vision and what Xbox's strategy has been. So let's, let's listen to what Phil Spencer has said. We're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. So right there, I'm going to stop at seven seconds into this video. People are taking that as Xbox giving up and conceding this generation to the console wars, a war that they have been saying. I, I can find articles all the way back to 2019. There may even be, be some before that saying that they are not in the console wars. They aren't here to try to outsell PlayStation, outsell Nintendo. That is in their strategy. Their strategy clearly has been for a multitude of years now, even before the Series X and S launched, was to have that ecosystem and open it up to as many people as possible where they can play games on any device that they want. I pulled up a couple of examples here in case people don't believe me, but this is an article from The Verge. And this is from June 11th, 2019. And the main thing here that Phil Spencer says on the future of gaming the business isn't how many consoles you sell. Just do a quick find here. And here is exactly what he says. I don't need to sell any specific version of the console in order for us to reach our business goals. The business isn't how many consoles you sell. The business is how many players are playing the games that they buy, how they play. So if somebody bought an original Xbox One from us on launch day and they're buying and playing games, I don't need to sell them an S. I don't need to sell them an X. If they want to stay on the Xbox One, they have to, they have and stay as a great member of our community or subscribe to Game Pass. That's great business for us. Now you can take that quote. That's from 2019 before the ecosystem has expanded, before they've expanded xCloud and Xbox Cloud Gaming to as many devices that it is currently on. And you can extrapolate that and see how their strategy has stayed the same but have evolved in terms of how many devices are going to have Xbox on it. He's saying it right there, they aren't trying to out console everybody else. They aren't trying to push consoles onto people, although it is still a part of their business. They want that to be an avenue where people can access Xbox and access the ecosystem. The business for them is how many users are playing, no matter what device they're on. And then we have an article here. This is from GameSpot, and it is from August 21st, 2020. Title, Microsoft kind of doesn't care if you buy an Xbox Series X. Now, the article title there is kind of clickbaity, but here's exactly what Phil Spencer actually says. He says, it, and this is what the article says, but we'll get to Phil Spencer's quote. It says, in discussion of next-gen consoles, I often see the question pop up. Why would I get an Xbox Series X if I have a good PC and Game Pass? I'm fine with the Xbox One X. Why would I jump to a Series X? Well, yeah, why would you? Xbox as a brand kind of doesn't care if that Game Pass subscriber with a beefy PC buys the next console. That person is already in the Xbox ecosystem. And if you're cool with your X, with your One X, you're still buying games and likely subscribing to Xbox Live and or Game Pass services as well. He says here, how many consoles do I sell versus how many consoles does another company sell, Sony or Nintendo or other companies back in the day, that's not our approach. If that was our approach, we wouldn't put our games on PC, we wouldn't put our games on Xbox One, we wouldn't do xCloud and allow people to play games on their phones. And then they say here in the article, Phil Spencer has been consistent and vocal with this messaging. Right there, this is back from 2020. He's essentially saying the exact same thing 
that he said in this interview that everybody is freaking out on and pretending like he's come up with this brand new messaging where he's giving up on the Xbox brand and the Xbox console. But we'll continue on here with more stuff that Phil Spencer says. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, very very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform. Well, I'll stop it there because we should talk about what he says in that little section as well too. They're third place in the console marketplace. It is going to be very tough for them to ever catch up to PlayStation and to Nintendo. And he, he extrapolates a bit on that as well in this interview where he says one of the biggest reasons why it will be hard is because they lost last generation, which was the first real digital generation where people built up digital catalogs on a certain platform and getting people to just abandon that digital catalog, that ecosystem that they've paid thousands of dollars into is very, very hard. And that makes absolute sense, whether you want to believe it or not, just makes complete sense. If you spent thousands of dollars on PlayStation 4, you're probably going to get a PS5 to continue to be able to play those games, especially because of the backwards compatibility with the PS4. Same thing with Xbox. That's why they're so big on backwards compatibility, because they know if they can get people to invest in the current generation, people who have invested in the Xbox One generation, the likelihood that they just continue in that ecosystem so they still have access to those games is very high. And the likelihood that they will continue for the next gen and the next gen and the next gen is very high because of all the money that they have spent. Now, he does touch here on something that I say Xbox absolutely needs to improve upon, which is one of their biggest failings, I would say, with the whole Redfall thing, is making the console players feel like they are those first class citizens. I think it's very unacceptable. It was very bad what they did with the Redfall marketing where they showed off PC gameplay and the experience on console was nothing like the PC gameplay. And if you're a console player, I talked about this in my video yesterday morning. I'm not just coming up with this now. You would probably start questioning what Xbox is doing with console. Are they abandoning it? Is it really not something they actually care about? Because they care about users and they care about expanding the ecosystem. But if the Xbox sales are falling or they're stagnating, are they just going to give up on it? It's a very valid question right now within what is going on with Xbox, especially as their sales have fallen 30% from a hardware perspective, even though they're saying that is supply issues. Phil Spencer here in this interview, he does reiterate that Xbox is at the core of the Xbox brand. It's still a part of Xbox that they are going to focus on and make sure that it is a first class experience. At this point, there's too much talk about that. I will give that to everybody. There's been way too much talk about that. Phil and Xbox need to start delivering the Xbox Series X. They need to start making people with an Xbox Series X be happy that they purchased that console. That is right now one of the biggest issues at Xbox. And my, and my fingers are crossed that they will turn that around. But I mean, we won't know until we see that in action. As somebody who has a PC and a console, I, I play on my console like 90% of the time. So I'm really hoping that that happens. But we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. And there you have it. What I just talked about, what he says here, he's absolutely correct on that. And people are taking the fact that he says, if we just build great games, it's not going to turn around the console share. And they're twisting that into him saying that they aren't going to try to go out and build great games, which is absolutely not what he's saying. He's looking at this from a business perspective and, and the numbers. I'm sure he has gone through it analytically and seen how difficult it is to get somebody to switch consoles once they have already built up that massive digital ecosystem. If you don't think that they looked at those numbers before launching the Xbox Series X, before launching Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Cloud Gaming. I think it's a very naive take because 
Why do you think they're trying to expand out this digital ecosystem across every single device on whatever you play on, on your phone, on your your smart TV, on your console and on your PC? The reason they're wanting to do that is because it keeps people in the ecosystem digitally so that it makes it really hard to ever leave that ecosystem. Think about your phone. Think about your Apple or your Android phone. I know me, I've been on Android pretty much my entire life because I've fully invested into everything Android, into everything Google. And although you can get some of that stuff on Apple as well, I'll probably never go over to an iPhone because I'm so invested in that ecosystem. They're kind of trying to do that same thing here with gaming. And this has nothing to do that quote there with Xbox is going to abandon trying to make good games. People keep throwing the Xbox 360 era as a way to try to disprove this point here, which is absurd because he even addresses that in this interview where he's talking about the digital side of games. Xbox 360 was still largely physical. People were going out and buying physical games. They had collections of these massive uh, shelves full of Xbox 360 games that they could move over to the PS4 or the generation after that and not feel like they would just be abandoning this entire digital catalog that they would never have access to because the physical game was actually right there that they would be able to keep with them forever. So it's a completely different argument. And I 100% I believe he is correct by saying it's hard to get people away once they've invested thousands and thousands of dollars into a digital ecosystem. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. And that's another great point. I know this sounds like a uh, Phil Spencer defense tour, which it absolutely isn't. I'm just sick and tired of seeing all the disingenuous bad faith, just lack of information takes out there on Twitter about what he is saying here. That is absolutely true. And I've talked about this on my channel for the last number of years. I, you could go through my videos and you'll find it somewhere. But I talked about this so many times on my channel that people buy consoles for games that are third party that they've already invested in more so than they buy first party games. And we can throw, we'll use PlayStation as an example, but the statistics are out there. It's indisputable because the numbers and the facts are right there in front of our face. From a third party perspective, these are the numbers of first party versus third party game sales quarterly from Q1 2019 to Q3 2020. 22 on the PlayStation platform. And you guessed it, the bar here with significantly more sales than the other are third party games. It's more than 50%. It's more than 60% of people on PlayStation are playing third party games on the PS5. They aren't playing, they aren't picking up the PS5 to play first party games. So right there, his point is not only proven from the PlayStation perspective, but he's proving his own point. He obviously has those numbers from the Xbox perspective. Who knows how skewed those numbers are? How many people are playing first-party Xbox games versus how many people are playing third-party Xbox games? But we will use PlayStation here because they have the stronger first-party lineup. And if the strongest first-party lineup to some people in their minds is PlayStation, and they can't even get the majority of people playing their first-party games, what makes you think that other platforms that are third place in the console market, that's going to start pushing them more of their consoles forward. And we'll continue on here with the ending. And their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. It's not, not going to happen. And again, he's correct on that too. Now, I agree with what he's saying here, and I've recognized that we aren't in that time anymore where you have cartridges that hold the entire game where you don't need to get these huge updates day one and the games barely even work day one, all that type of stuff. I, I'm, a, I'm a physical games person too. 
but I've recognized the reality of the situation is we're in an entirely digital era and it has completely changed the landscape of how the video game market works. And that's just basic common sense. You look at how any entertainment industry with technology, when they've entered the digital era, just how drastically it changes the entire industry. Like, I mean, just look at movies and games. We were rent, going to Blockbuster to rent movies and and TV shows back in the day. And now everything is streaming right to your TV. And look how drastically that changed that market by getting all of those stores to be shut down. So Phil Spencer is spot on with what he is saying in this clip. There's just a ton of people out here pretending like this is new. This is something that came out of the blue, that they are not trying to out console PlayStation and Nintendo when he's been literally saying this since the beginning of the Xbox Series X and S and even before the console launch as that first article I showed earlier in the video was from 2019. I think just don't listen to the disingenuous comments. I feel like a lot of people know that this has been their messaging, but they're trying to skew it to make Phil Spencer and to make Xbox look worse than it is. At the end of the day, there's a lot that Xbox doesn't do good, but they've been consistent on their messaging with their ecosystem and providing as much access to their games on any device that you play on. I will leave the video there, guys. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think I'm right? Do you think people remember what he said? All that type of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.